Hi, this is Priyanka Chopra and you are watching Channel Y. The biggest South Asian media group, Y Media. Y Media. Y Media. Y Media has newspaper, midweek, radio, South Asian Pulse. Hi, I am Amitabh Bachchan and you are listening to South Asian Pulse. Hi, this is Amir Khan and you are listening to South Asian Pulse. Now, every day, listen to GTA's number one radio station, FM 91.9, from the morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. Television. You are watching Channel Y. Channel Y. You are... Prime Minister, welcome. It's a pleasure to be back. Online, SouthAsianDaily.com. The biggest South Asian media group. Why media? Why media? This part of the program is brought to you by Midweek Newspaper. Published every Tuesday. Welcome to Channel Y. I'm your host, Shudhu Jaswal. Today, we have the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation, and the Minister of Trade, Minister Vic Fidelli with us. Minister, welcome to Channel Y. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here, Yubir. You're very welcome, Minister. The player is all ours. And the Minister has been just uh, visited, he's just visited India on a very important trip. And we'd like to discuss uh, what are the trade opportunities between India and Can uh, India and Ontario in particular. We have less than $4 uh, million of export as far as uh, Ontario's exports to uh, India are concerned uh, approximately 1.3 billion dollar trade so I think the target for Canada India was set to be 15 billion dollar it's roughly around 6.5 or 7 billion dollar of course Ontario isn't that big and we have close to a million population of Indian origin they say the numbers are 830,000 50,000 but I am pretty sure it's uh, even more than a million people from Indian origin which are right here in Ontario so how can we build that relationship and I think this was a very important uh, trip Minister, tell us something uh, about this trip and uh, what happened there in India? Well, I think it was, uh, first of all, a very successful trip. Um, it was uh, meant to be primarily business to business, with a little bit of government meetings as well. We brought 12 Ontario businesses with us who were involved in transportation, uh, infrastructure, and in technology. And they had 150 meetings collectively. Cool. So it was uh, an overwhelming success, and the first of many that uh, our government will, will be taking. I did, uh, you know, when I spoke to you on our radio show over the phone while you were in Mumbai, yeah. uh, you did tell me that there is a company who signed sign an agreement around 250 jobs will be created. Tell us about that as well. The name of the company is VVDN Technologies. Uh, they make uh, the design and make a huge array of electronic products. Uh, something that looks like the Alexa, as an example, would be the kind of products they would make. Mm -hmm. They are going to employ around 250 engineers in the Kitchener-Waterloo area all masters and PhD graduates uh, this is a very exciting announcement we've been uh, after months of engagement with them uh, we were able to finish that deal so that's a very uh, successful return you also attended a meeting in Delhi regarding uh, Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce annual meeting and um, you know this, co uh, this commerce organization is very important how did that go uh, very exciting we had uh, I was able to speak at the Indo-Canada uh, business group uh, as well later uh, in Mumbai at the Canada India business group so both of them right. um, it was a real opportunity to talk about how Ontario is open for business and open for trade and I told them that's not a slogan that's in our DNA uh, Premier Ford said it's too expensive to do business in Ontario and for the last 17 months we've looked at how to remove more than five billion dollars in costs from the business community and so that was the message that I was able to deliver. There's also uh, a dinner hosted uh, by our uh, diplomat to India, <coughs> excuse me, Nadir Patel. And we do understand our former pr prime minister was there. And I know uh, a couple of business guys, they uh, tweeted pictures from India. And I could recognize you were sitting there, our former prime minister, and these uh, business guys, they were quite excited. So what did happen over there? Well, I can tell you, first of all, a former prime minister, Stephen Harper, is uh, ex ex just so well respected worldwide. When I was in Japan, we met up just a few weeks ago. We met up. We had a lovely breakfast together and talked about uh, his assistance with 
with uh, uh, Ontario companies in Japan. Right. And here we are in India at a dinner at the at the uh, uh, consulate uh, office, uh, at the High Commission office, I should say. Right. And uh, Premier, uh, former uh, Prime Minister Harper, uh, people hung on his every word because he is so well respected. Yes. Um, and he understands business. And uh, it was a, a delightful dinner, first of all, and a very uh, important discussion on Canada doing business with India. We do not do enough business, plain and simple. Our volume is very low, and we need to ramp it up, and he's there to help. What are the reasons that you've identified? We've seen tra trade missions in the past as well. I don't want to go into too much detail, including Dalton McGinty. He took a delegation and their past premiers, and yeah. you know, of course, yeah. uh, uh, PC leaders have been going there. But what is the reason we haven't been able to do enough business with India? Well, I can't nail down why in the last 15 years we weren't able to do more business in India, but I can tell you, uh, one of the stories I heard while I was there was that every, uh, the, every minute of every day, 30 uh, uh, rural Indians move to urban centers. That's yes. a huge change. That means uh, 16 million. If you were to put it in Ontario terms, that would be requiring to create a city the yes. size of Ottawa every month till 2050. Now that's how much infrastructure needs to be built. I look at that as a huge opportunity for Ontario companies with our vast experience in creating infrastructure to get over there and begin bidding on contracts to design infrastructure, to design technology plays. I, I'm shocked. I thought, I thought that the number when I read how little, uh, in, uh, how little we um, export to the India was a typo. I thought it was just a wrong note. Right. It's not. It's very sad. And so it's, I view it as a blank canvas for us to be able to paint our future together. Yeah, almost um, $2.5 trillion economy, the world's seventh largest economy, 1.3 billion yeah. people over there, and uh, the exports you were mentioning, less than $400 million. Yeah. Yes. So uh, infrastructure is one area. Of course, India is going to spend not millions, but billions of dollars in infrastructure. What other areas uh, have you identified? Well, again, to put it in perspective, between Ontario and the U.S., we have two-way exchange of $400 billion. Between oh, oh. Ontario to India, 400 million. million. That, so, so the numbers are, you would think they're wrong. Yeah. Um, infrastructure, uh, in, since my last trip to India, I've really noticed a tremendous amount of uh, roads and services have been constructed, and so I give them great credit in uh, the development that they're doing. But in the technology aspect, I am uh, wonderfully impressed. You look in Canada, we might have a, a saturation of 43 to 50 percent telecom, broadband, that type of thing. India was at a low of about 7 percent. Today they're almost at 98 percent. They've just jumped in. So anything that's new, anything that helps them find efficiencies through technology, they're ready to accept. And I think that's a real play for Ontario companies to get in there, but primarily in infrastructure. As far as the ease of doing business on that particular index, India has progressed up. Uh, but uh, in your viewpoint, as, as a minister or as the, as the delegation, what is your uh, interpretation that yes, is it really easy now to do business in India? I think you need to be there. It, okay. it, I won't say it's easy. Nothing is easy in, in a, in a, uh, when you're trying to do billions of dollars of business. But you need to show up. You need to look them in the eye, be right. face to face. You can't do it by dropping in and, and promising and 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 uh, uh, email and uh, a phone call. You need to show up and be at their doorstep to show that you have a full commitment, that you're bringing delegations who are ready to work, ready to accept Indian businesses, and ready to uh, ship out uh, Ontario uh, expertise. Consistent touch, as you're already mentioning, is very important, but uh, we've seen at the federal level. Uh, our Prime Minister went there, and before his trip, there were quite a few cabinet ministers who went over there. But recently, if I could say in the last um, probably around 15 to 16 months, not many visits from the Indian side at, at the federal level and not many visits from here. We had the Indian cabinet minister, Mr. Hardeep Singh Puri. Uh, I interviewed him recently, and the Indian cabinet minister said that we were waiting, that time they were waiting for the elections. 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 Yeah. So 
Now that little bit, uh, you know, there has been a little bit of a bitterness uh, yeah. between India and Canada. So is that affecting our Ontario relationship as well? Well, I think it's important that we in Ontario create our own destiny there. Okay. I think uh, it's very critical that we uh, do things ourselves to make certain that we're represented the way we want to be represented. Nobody knows us better than ourselves. The, the provincial government, as I said earlier, has made huge changes to the business climate in Ontario, open for business, carving five billion dollars out of the cost of doing business by, double, uh, by lowering your worker safety insurance premiums without touching the benefits, by allowing an um, accelerated capital cost, which means business businesses can write their equipment off. That's a $700 million savings for business. Nobody would be able to trans translate that information better than us ourselves. We know what we've done for business. Cutting red tape. Uh, Premier Ford has asked us to remove $400 million in the cost of doing red tape by the end of next year. I think that's for us to tell from our heart to the people of India and the businesses in India. Nobody can do it better than us. Better than you. Uh, for our viewers' benefit, I'd like to tell you that uh, our minister also met the most funny man in India. And everybody knows that, that who is the most funny man in India. He brings smiles to millions and millions of people right across the globe, not just in India. And the guy's name is Kapil Sharma. You did meet him and uh, I'd like to sh uh, you know, share your experience with him and of course we're going to talk about because there is a huge potential of the movie industry the film industry here in Ontario we'll talk about that but how was meeting uh, Kapil Sharma? Kapil Sharma was so funny oh my gosh so we met in the green room the little meeting room and we did a little video together which by the way has more than 50,000 uh, views already on the little video wait till the show airs in December okay. but he said to me uh, so you're a Canadian uh, minister I, I thought you'd be taller and of course I <laughs> I responded back to him with a jab that I said, well, you know, you're no Shah Rukh Khan yourself. <laughs> so we had a good little exchange. Um, right. and then uh, and when we went on the show, we talked about the importance of uh, Ontario-Indian uh, relations. We talked about the fact that there are 830,000 or more um, uh, people of uh, Indian origin who live in Ontario, 52,000 students, 171,000 tourists from India come every year. So we talked about that, but I had a side mission. You need right. to know. You right. need to know. You'd be about my side mission. Mm. I told, I told uh, Kapil Sharma that m my chief of staff Rahul, his mother Shashi, and his father Raj wanted me to find him a wife while I'm here. So of course the camera panned over on him, his face got red. So we had a lot of fun. I can't wait for that to air. That was a little on the lighthearted side. But it was a subtle message to his audience. They should be considering coming to Ontario, looking at Ontario, visiting Ontario, being educated in Ontario, opening a business in Ontario. There was a mission there. Yeah, and of course we, we had IFA awards here in uh, Toronto and there are a lot of uh, uh, films being a short hair, uh, especially the Punjabi movies more now. Yeah. Bollywood movies were there. Yeah. But uh, there's a lot of opportunity that more and more Bollywood movies can be shot here in Ontario, Canada. So was there any discussion on that with anybody else as well? <coughs> so we had a couple of our MPPs come with us. So Nina Tangri, who is my parliamentary assistant, she came with us on the trip. Uh, Deepak Anand, who is the special advisor to my ministry, both came on the trip and, uh, and after I returned home they stayed and they met with the film industry as well one of the messages we delivered was we have five tax credits in Ontario for producing films here which is very advantageous we have Ontario creates with also invests in films and there are other regions in Ontario uh, the north from where I live in, in North Bay that area that has special northern grants if you film there uh, and so we know that there there is a new opportunity, a new found opportunity to, uh, for uh, Indian companies to come and film here as well. And a huge audience for them. Yeah. We'll come back to the India file again, but uh, since uh, I have this opportunity, you're the Minister of uh, Job Creation now. Numbers seems to be fine. I, uh, we all know unemployment numbers nationally as well as in Ontario, yeah. they seem to be fine. But there's still one concern. People are still having a hard time in making their ends meet. And one of the reasons that we hear from on our radio 
talk shows or TV talk shows here, uh, when people call in, call in live on our TV shows, they say these are not high paying jobs and we still need more job creation. What's your take on that? I, I agree with them. Right. Uh, the issue that we need it happened again today. I was in Woodstock earlier today, and between driving from Woodstock here, I made several phone calls to businesses around Ontario. Exactly the same thing was told. Mm -hmm. We can't find people. These are businesses who cannot find employees. So it's interesting, uh, at 5.6% unemployment in, Ontario, in Canada, 55 here in Ontario, yes. we have people without jobs. Okay. But we also have jobs without people because over the last 15 years there's been a mismatch. We're training people here and we need the jobs here. They're not aligned. We need them to line up. So we need more skilled trades. We need more people to go back to the college system and get a skilled trade. We need the businesses. So we've been supplying funds, investing in the businesses for apprentice programs. We'll help pay the businesses to run these apprentice programs. Because because we have so many companies. In my little city that I live in, in North Bay, 56,000 people, there are 420 unfilled jobs today. So yes, under Premier Ford, in 17 months, all the changes that we've made have created 256,000 new jobs. Many, uh, for the most part, they're full-time. For the most part, they're private sector. Uh, and many of them are um, independent uh, entrepreneurs that have created their own job. But I agree, more needs to be done. There's always more to do. Last time when uh, Premier Ford was here um, in our Channel Y studios, he did mention that uh, major infrastructure announcements will be made. He did make a few as well. Yeah. But one of the important points, since you're the Minister for Economic Development, or Trade and Job Creation, when we talk to any big business houses in US, um, Europe, or even in India or China for that matter, one of the things that we say, they say no new highways are being built here. How do you move around people here? Things are too spaced out. So are we planning to build any new highways? highway here in GTA? We have massive investments in new highways okay. uh, and I know our Minister of Transportation would love the uh, opportunity to detail exactly which ones. We have many new investments in highways. Literally uh, more than 150 billion dollars over the next 10 years in new uh, uh, infrastructure. The, the, the Premier is so proud as he should be. 25 and a half billion dollars in new transit. Um, the Crosstown, Crosstown uh, being complete, the new loop, the Ontario route that goes from uh, Ontario Place to the Science Centre, a brand new transit, uh, extension of the n northbound subway, an extension of the Scarborough subway. So there's huge investment, 25 billion in subway, tremendous amount of investment in highways and roads in the GTA, in Mississauga, all the way to Hamilton, Kitchener, Waterloo, a lot of uh, uh, infrastructure investment. We live in the world of innovation and disruption today. At the federal level, we do have a ministry headed by Minister Bans, Nafti Bans, uh, Minister for Innovation Technology. Job creation is fine, but today in the world of disruption and innovation, how well uh, as a minister you are preparing Ontarians any sort of disruption or any new technology? Uh, almost every day okay. I communicate with somebody in the uh, AI or uh, continuous uh, um, uh, and autonomous vehicle sector. Ontario is a real leader. We are the number two technology cluster in all of North America yeah. after Silicon Valley. Silicon. So that's how serious and that's how huge this is. We have um, more than 300,000 employees, 22,000 tech firms in, in Ontario between Ottawa, GTA, uh, Kitchener-Waterloo, the Triangle, uh, spectacular. Now let me throw a twist here. We are also the number two automaker in North America. People don't know that. We have the only jurisdiction in North America with all five uh, large, the five largest automakers in one jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Plus we have a truck maker, Hino is a truck maker. We make around just under two million vehicles a year in Ontario. 
Michigan, number one, makes just over two million vehicles. So we're very close to Michigan. People don't appreciate that. Sure. But we're the only place where we have the IT and auto in the same jurisdiction. Now that aligns us beautifully for the future for continuous and uh, autonomous vehicles. That's why Ford uh, hired 400 people in Ottawa to study and do research continuous and autonomous vehicles. GM put 700 employees in Markham. I cut the ribbon a couple of weeks ago at Uber, downtown Toronto, 300 employees in their autonomous vehicle lab. This is the future and Ontario is at the pinnacle uh, between technology and auto in that smash up. Creating a major technology hub, who do we give the credit, the federal government or the provincial government? To the employers, to, to the risk takers, to the entrepreneurs. Governments don't create jobs. We create the environment for, for the business people to create the jobs. And that's why when I look back to uh, uh, Sergio Marchioni, who was, he's now deceased, but he was the chairman of Fiat Chrysler. He told the previous premier, you have made Ontario the most expensive jurisdiction in all of North America in which to do business. And that's why the day Premier Ford and our government was elected, he said, this is it. We need to cut the cost of doing business in Ontario. Uh, and I've said several times now, we've taken $5 billion of costs away by reducing taxes, cutting anything the government has control of, we've pulled back. And the business community has responded by hiring 256,000 people. So we've created the environment for business to succeed. That's why businesses are flowing. I give the credit to the businesses. Quickly talking about the auto sector, this is one area as much as we agree. We're still one of the major auto hubs uh, right across North America. But you know, the assembly plants um, or the productions, they are on a decline right now. And not, not many major assembly plants. I'm not sure uh, whether you got a chance to meet. Uh, there are some major uh, auto giants in India, whether it's Mahindra, Tata's, the Bajaj, there are many major giants. So we're not able to bring any new major assembly plants in Ontario. It's interesting you said that. So I mentioned earlier I was in Woodstock today. Okay. My announcement in Woodstock stock was job site challenge. Okay. So we are saying to the municipalities, these companies need a location. And if we don't even have that, then we get bypassed to the states and to Mexico. So we are trying to assemble mega sites. So the uh, municipalities, the companies, uh, individual developers, they have between January 1st and March 31st to bid on putting together a mega site, 500 to 1500 acres. And we as the province will jump in, we'll assess whether it's the right kind of site, and then we'll start looking at infrastructure. Can we bring sewer and water? there? Can we bring the right electricity voltage to those sites? Can we get pre-done environmental assessments? Can we get everything ready so that in the fall we can go out to the world now and say we have X amount of mega sites ready for you. When you've made the decision to locate and to locate in Ontario, you've got a site, you will be able to get a building permit instantly. You don't have to wait days, weeks, months, years for environmental assessments. It's all done. The zoning is done for you. And that's what we're doing to establish Ontario as the next location for a mega plant. All right. My last question would be, uh, you know, recently we had the meeting of our uh, Premier Ford with the Prime Minister. Yes. As a uh, your ministry is very uh, important in terms of uh, economic development and job creation. What are your expectations? This is a minority government and in terms to support your uh, economic development and job creation. Well, I will echo Premier Ford, who, by the way, I think has done a remarkable job in the last month since the election of bringing the country together. Uh, in fact, uh, in the coming days, we will see a meeting here in Ontario of the Premiers. Uh, I'll be meeting with them Sunday night uh, the, uh, this weekend. I think it's, he's done, the Premier Ford has done just a remarkable job of rising to the role of, the, of a senior uh, Premier in Ontario. And I will echo him and say, we need to be united. We need to be together. Ontario needs the federal government. The federal government needs Ontario. Yes, we have our uh, squabbles once in a while, but we've got a bigger mission ahead of us. And I think Premier Ford is uh, doing a remarkable job in leading that charge about uh, tranquility and working together for the betterment of all of the, all of the citizens. 
My last, uh, this is this is just a compliment to you as much as uh, we have high respect for all our religious uh, places in India. But usually what happens whenever the last 20 years we've been covering for our newspaper, radio, or TV, whenever we get any coverage from India, there's lots of discussion about the religious places that our uh, leaders visit. But there is some coverage about the business aspect. In your uh, trip, I saw a lot of things like open for business. So you are especially talking more about business. That's one thing I really liked in your trip. So uh, I hope that, uh, as you already mentioned, that many more to come because consistency is very important. I'd like to uh, say, uh, ask you what do you have to say about maintaining the consistency and your final comments. Well, I think uh, you're going to see uh, us as a government back in India frequently. I think it's very, very critical that we are there. Uh, it's, you know, it's all about people to people. It's really what it comes down to. India is a wonderful, vibrant community. Uh, and we want to be a bigger part of it as well. And we can only do it by showing up. All right. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you for your time. And we wish you all the best. Thank you, Adrian. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion. We will uh, carry on our uh, discussion as far as the India file is concerned and we'd like to welcome Minister uh, more often on economic development, about job creation and other aspects uh, as well. Keep watching Channel Y.